and daughters, my sons and daughters, I am your Heavenly Father. Listen to me. Listen to me now. I am calling for you. Open your ears and hear me now. Give me your sins. Let them die on my cross. Let them die on my cross and leave them there. In love, follow and serve me. From this day forward, then my light will shine in you, flourishing you, and burning you. And you will share it with other people, for that makes me happy. For this world is dying, is covered with darkness and sin everywhere. Oh, my sons and daughters, I love you. I love you so much. I died on the cross for your sins that you bowed out to and serve here. So listen to me. Listen to me now. Open your ears. And let your sins die on my cross. Give them to my cross and let them die and leave them there. And from this day forward, come love and serve me. For I am the way to the truth and the light and the life that's everlasting. Oh, my sons and daughters, I love you. I love you. So let my light shine in you, flourish in you, and burn in you, and share with other people. So, on my eternal judgment day, you will inherit my kingdom and live forever and live forever. Amen. Amen. Hey y'all, listen. Where am I? You see me? You can hear me, but you can't see me. Am I over there? No. Am I over there? No. Here I am. Hi. Now, this free sermon is called Listen. So come on, you all. Open your ears. Listen. He's calling for you. Jesus Christ is calling for you. Come on, y'all. Wake up. Open your eyes. For the truth is Jesus Christ. He is the way to the truth and the light. And the life is everlasting. Amen. Amen. And we finally got some rain. Yay. And it's cooled off. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the sweet sermon is called Listen. It's kind of like air. Breathe in, breathe out. Come on. You know there's oxygen everywhere, or we couldn't be alive. It's just kind of like Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. He's here just because you can't see him doesn't mean he doesn't exist. So remember that, okay? You have to remember our purpose of why we're here. In the beginning, he formed us. Then he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, or God, gave him pardon himself. And then he died and suffered on the cross. Jesus Christ died and suffered on the cross for our sins. Then he's going to judge us at the end of time. Which 
between heaven and hell. Depends on who or what you bow down to and serve here. So understand that. Our true, real, 100% purpose of why we're here, our existence is God. If it wasn't for God, we would not be here. Understand that. Then he gave his one and only son, a part of himself, God did, to die on the cross and suffered. He suffered, don't you understand? So why do you serve, worship, and idolize things and people of this world? Why? When this is not our real eternal home. This is our in-between worlds, between heaven and hell. Depends on who or what you bow down to and serve here. So understand that. This is the real God's truth. Just like my near-death experience. I didn't lie. I didn't lie. When I had one of my kids, I woke up covered in blood. And I truly died. And I seen heaven and I seen hell. I know what hell looks like. I know what the devil looks like. I know what heaven looks like. And I'm in Jesus Christ. So why do you worship and bow down to and serve the things and people of this world? I've been teaching you for the past few Sundays. Number one, you love and serve God. Number two comes your personal family, your spouse. Number three comes your job. Then comes your friends. You need to remember that. Our purpose is to serve and love Jesus Christ. Like I said, you can't serve two gods. You can't serve two gods. You can only serve one. There's only one real true God. One. And he is the way to the truth and the light and the life that's everlasting. Amen. Wouldn't you rather have eternal life? You would rather bow down to and serve your own wants and desires and people here that you're dying from, your soul's darkened from? And the devil's laughing because he knows he has you because you serve them? Because he knows he's going to get you on Jesus Christ's eternal judgment day? Are they really worth dying for? Come on, people. Knowing nothing here on this world is worth dying for. God is the way, the truth, and the life that's everlasting. He's the only way. The only way. He's the only one real true God. Understand that. Okay, now. Um, remember Joshua 1, 9. Um, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He's with us wherever we go. He's our strength. He's our shield, our protector. He'll protect us through, through the mob. You lean on Jesus Christ. You have to lean on Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus, he will never leave us or forsake us or abandon us. Always here for us. In Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In Psalm 37, and it's really long, so. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do.
do this. He will make your righteousness shine. Remember, I've been teaching you about the light and the darkness. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little one in the wick a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Remember, enjoy great peace. I've been teaching you through the Holy Spirit is peace, love, and joy. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword. Remember, the wicked draw the sword, but through Jesus Christ, he protects us and shields us. We lean on him. And bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But the swords will pierce their own hearts. And their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. Remember that. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The day of the blameless are known to the Lord. And their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster they will not wither. In the days of famine they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay. But the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land. But those he curses will be cut off. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumbles, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Remember that. He upholds us with his hand. I was young, and now I am old. Yet I was never seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Turn from evil. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever. For the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom and his tongue speaks what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lie. But the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourish like a green tree in its nation. Native soil, excuse me. But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. Remember peace. But all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous will come from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Remember this. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um. Um. Remember the one I read to you last week? Isaiah 60. If you can keep reading and studying that, um. 
I'll read the first couple verses um, to remind you, okay? I want you to read and say Isaiah 60. Like I said, I read it last week, but I'm going to start on it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. For the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come afar and your daughters are carried on the arms. Then you will look and be radiant. Radiant means glowing. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Amen. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you. To the riches of the nations will come. So I want you to keep reading that and study that. That's a really good one. It's about the light. His light. And remember what I, I read to you last week about John 3, 19, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. The men love darkness instead of light. Because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth, remember, he's the truth. Jesus, God is the truth. Our Heavenly Father. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so they may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God has been done through God so remember this I'm teaching you about the light and the darkness the darkness is the sins and the light is through Jesus Christ our Heavenly Father okay um, go to Romans 1 7 32 um, I don't have a drink my water bottle broke so well with me here. Um, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Now remember saints are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like prophets. Um, I taught you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Through and from the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God whom I serve with my whole heart is preaching the gospel of his son. Is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers in all times. And I will pray that now at last my God's will the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart, impact, excuse me, impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. Remember this, spiritual gifts. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both the Greeks and the non-Greeks, both the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God. For well, there is salvation of everyone who believes, first the Jews and the Gentiles, for the gospel is righteousness from God and revealing. For the gospel is righteousness from God is revealed. 
a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteousness, the righteous will live by faith. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by the wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what he has been made so that men are without excuse okay for although they knew God they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him but their thinking became futile and their foolishness hearts were darkened remember this and their foolish hearts were darkened Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images. Remember this. And exchanged the glory of God and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity. Remember the sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Remember this. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served create, created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. So remember verse 24 again. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts, sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Remember this. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Remember this. And worshipped and served created rather than the creator remember god our, god's our creator who is forever praised amen because of this god gave them over to blameless lusts even the woman exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones in the same way the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Remember, this is unwed sex. It's against God. I've taught you about that. You will not inherit the kingdom of God if you do this. Men committed indecent acts with other men and deceived in themselves the duty penalty for their preservation. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. Remember this. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanders, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Remember this. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice. Amen. Amen. Remember, I've been teaching you about that. Um, Galatians 5, 19, 26. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, and fornication, and fornication is unwed sex, 
and cleanliness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies of which I told you before in time past shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you do these things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then down to verse 26 to 28. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good, for those who love him, who have called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. That was Romans 8, 26, 28. Okay, excuse me. You're <clears throat> okay, now I've been teaching you about the Revelation at the end of time. Uh, the Revelation is the end of time. It's based on the end of time. Okay, um... Excuse me, i got a hole in my water bottle, so... you to listen, okay? Please listen. I am preaching you the gospel of the truth, the truth of the end of time. You must understand. You must understand. It's the end of time. This world is covered in darkness, sin everywhere, everywhere. And Jesus Christ is crying through us, the righteous. We can bring back the light through love, peace, and joy, the gifts, or I mean the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It will shine in us, burn in us, share with other people, for that makes Jesus Christ happy. You understand? You must understand this, okay? Okay, Revelation 2, to the angels of the churches in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them false. You have perverted and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown worry. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the heights from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nic Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the angels of the church in Paris, Marion right. These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. Remember this. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of saints. But are a synagogue of saints. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Who has 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. These are words of, of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death, in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people you have people there who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Remember sexual morality is unwed sex. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teachings of Nicolaitans, repent therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I give some of the hidden manna. I have also given him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who received it. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and those feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself prophetess. prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual morality, which is unwed sex, and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, immorality but she is unwilling, so I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensively. Unless they repent of her ways, I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will I know. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyria, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burdens on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, to him who overcomes and do my will and to the end, I will give authority over the nation. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces with pottery. Just as I have received authority from my Father, I will also give him the morning star. He has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Hello, sir. How are you? Okay, it's a little cold out here. Oh, I think that's pretty I'm nice. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm preaching. Oh, okay. I'm from my side. You can stand your You got the camera on? Yeah. Okay, I'll sit there. I'll walk behind. Okay. I'll, I'll go to the store real quick. That's why right. you saw me earlier walking through. Okay, so remember Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Remember that. Okay, um, I think I've read everything. Okay, now remember, I've been teaching you on the end of time. The end of time is now. 
now was the time to give your sins to the cross, let them die, and leave them there, and love and serve Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, from this day forward. Then, on His eternal judgment day, when your body dies, or His second coming, whichever comes first, we'll make it to the top. And here it is, kingdom or when our body dies, we will inherit his kingdom and live eternally. Job comes first. So remember everything I've been teaching you, okay? The end of time. Number one, we are climbing this huge mountain. It's harder and harder as we climb. Number three, there's a garden of Eden. He will provide for us again. The righteous who make it to the top of the mountain. Now remember, this is the second coming of Christ Jesus which is near. Number four, his white fire is burning at the top of the mountain to guide us. Number five, war versus peace, which means there's going to be a great war between all the goodness and the badness here. But the choice is yours. Who do you serve here? Who do you worship here? Who do you bow down to here? Well, that's where you're going to end on his eternal judgment day. The choice is yours. Do you choose heaven? Are you going to end up in heaven where you're righteous and you do the right thing? You love and serve Jesus Christ? Or do you serve your own wants and desires here of this world? Well, then you may end up in the pits of hell, burning, suffering, eternally. Well, the devil's laughing over you. Like I told you last week, if you serve your own wants and desires, if you serve your own wants and desires, your sins here, the devil's laughing. You. The devil's laughing at you because he knows, he knows you bow down and you worship the things and people of this world. Stop doing them. Stop doing them. Give them to the cross. Pray now. Give them to the cross and let them die. Let them die. Love and serve Jesus Christ. For he is the way to the truth and the light and the life that's everlasting. Are your own wants and desires really, really, really worth dying for? Suffering in the pits of hell? In fire? Where the devil himself is laughing over you? Really? Remember what I told you in the beginning, in the beginning, God formed us. He made us. He's our purpose of why we're here. He's our heavenly father. We're his sons and daughters. We're his children. Without him, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't, nor would earth, nor would the things here. Nothing would be here. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't exist. There wouldn't be such a thing as people. Read in the beginning. In the beginning of the Revelations, it'll tell you all about in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth and people. So, yeah, we have to work. Blah, 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 because Adam and Eve sinned. So God kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. From that day forward, they had to work. But you got to remember, like I told you last week, where does money come from? Where does credit cards come from? Where does paper come from? A tree. Well, if you worship and bow down and serve them, well, you're worshiping, you're worshiping, you're bow down, and you're serving a tree. I mean, come on. Come on, people, from the time you get up until the time you go to bed, whatever you think about, whoever you think about, that's who you idolize, worship, and bow down to, and serve here. He knows. He knows. Just like I told you at the very beginning, listen. Breathe in, breathe out. You have air. You have oxygen. Where's it come from? It comes from a tree. Yeah. Who provided it? God. God started it and gave it to us at the beginning of time. So, just because you can't see God doesn't mean he's not here. Spiritually, he's everywhere. He knows everything. He knows everything you do and say. He's everywhere all the time. You can't lie or hide from him. I've told you several times before in my other sermons, it's written in his eternal book. He has a book. He has a book. Huge, gigantic book. Everybody's name is in there. You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged in front of Jesus Christ. If 
your body dies, your soul moves on. We're going to be judged by Jesus Christ. He's got a huge, gigantic book. This book is huge, gigantic. Our name is in there. He knows every little thing you do, every big thing you do, and say He does. It's in his book. It's in his book. We're going to be judged. And we're going in between heaven and hell. The choice is yours. Right now, this very second, from the second you get up to the second you go to bed, what do you think about? Who do you think about? For that's who you worship, bow down to, and serve, and idolize here. False idol tree. False idol tree. I didn't lie to you twice I had cancer. I had cancer. I bowed. I got down on my hands and knees. I cried like a newborn baby. I just cried. Days, I just cried. I gave myself to God. I sacrificed myself. I, the old me died. I died. Tumors disappeared. I'm living proof there's a God. When I had one of my kids, when I had one of my kids, I woke up covered in blood. I saw heaven and I saw hell. I saw both places. I did. I thought it was just a dream until I woke up seeing myself covered in blood. I was covered in blood. So there is a heaven and there is a hell. Are you going to take that chance? Are you going to take that chance? When is the time for you to die? When are you going to take your last breath? No one knows. So God, just like his second coming, only he knows. The time is now. The time is now to love and serve Jesus Christ. Love and serve Jesus Christ. He formed us in the beginning of time. He formed us and made us. Gave us our water to drink, our food to eat, air to breathe. One for him. We wouldn't have him. We wouldn't exist. We wouldn't be here. He's a purpose of why we're here. <laughs> so why are you bound down? Why are you bowed down to false idol tree here? Why are you bowed down and serving false idol tree here? Why? There's only one God. You can't serve two gods. No, nope, you can't serve two gods. No, nope. you only serve one. And there's only one God. One real true God. And that's Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. like I've been teaching in the past few Sundays. He's our Heavenly Father. He formed us in the beginning of the time.
through Jesus Christ, you lean on him like I've been teaching you. He protects us and guides us through and from them. WWJD, what would Jesus do for all? Like I said, choice is yours. Choice is yours. Are your own wants and desires your sins really worth dying for? Well, you're dying by them now. You're dying by them from them now. Your soul is darkened. It's true. This is God's truth. I'm not lying. Your soul is darkened. And dying by and from them. And the devil's laughing. He's laughing. Because you know he has you on Jesus Christ's eternal judgment day. It's true. This is real God's truth. The devil's laughing. If you love and serve Jesus Christ, you love and serve Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. There's nothing like it. I mean, come on. There's nothing like heaven. white, glowing white everywhere. I've been preaching you on white. The choice is yours. Do you want to watch your bad attitude serve you? That's where you're going to end. This is the God's truth. This is where you're going to end. Um, okay, I'm losing my voice and I can't drink my water. i got to hold my water bottle. <laughs> um, God bless you all. Um, I'm working with two projects. Uh, my talk show, my son's been really busy, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him. So, the other ones to the city, believe it or not, is coming together. They talked about it a couple days ago on the radio. So, when it's done and it's been passed, I'll talk more about it when the time's right. But it's coming together, so that's good. We finally got some rain. Yay! Woo! Finally, it cooled off. So, have a beautiful, wonderful week. God bless y'all. See you next week. Thank you. Bye.